So good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Dr. Ron Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to this Sunday service for the Center for Spiritual Living Facebook, Space Coast. <laughs> My wife is hysterical here. So, <laughs> and if you've never been to a Center for Spiritual Living before, we believe there's one God, many paths to that God, and we're here to love, honor, and support you no matter what your divine path is. And the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast is a safe haven for people of all beliefs and lifestyles, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, you're welcome here. And to begin our service this morning, Reverend Jenna Watkins is gonna open us with a prayer and then Carol Gabika is going to do a reading for us. So I invite you to take this moment to turn within, to turn within and tap into that inner awareness, that inner awareness that spirit, love, wholeness is the source of all life. It is the source of my life, your life. It is the source of each and every person on this planet. The source is wholeness. It is love, it is peace. And as we tap into that inner awareness within ourselves, let us expand that love and peace outward to our neighbors, to our country folk, to the every person around the globe, let us send our love and our peace and our awareness that love is the only reality, that love is the source of each and every one of us. And we know that as we expand this awareness of love, we see miracles. We see miracles and people stepping up claiming peace and living in peace. And I bless each and every person who is here today or listening in. I bless your awareness, your consciousness, your presence in this spiritual community, a community of love and support, of friendship, of spiritual family, and we come together in this moment, bonded, supporting, loving, and healing each other. And in this moment, I know that we are aware that we're about to hear some ideas, some thoughts, receive a message, and a, something that will allow us to go a little more deep deeper into the awareness that we are spirit expressing in human form and that we are love. I bless Reverend Dr. Ron Fox for the ideas and thoughts for the words of spirit that flow through him in his message today. And I give thanks for all of this. And so it is. So it is. Good morning, folks. My heart has a file cabinet. It stores the experiences, visions, and feelings that have captured my being. New drawers are continually added. My great grandbabies with their smiling faces. Life's occurrences flying in orderly records of the things that break through my barriers and enter the file cabinet in my heart. A new drawer has been added. Already images flooding its sacred chambers. A young woman playing a violin. A little boy bending backwards in his mother ar mother's arms with the raucous gurgling laughter only a child can make. Seemingly a pile of clothes at the side of the street. Three soldiers standing around, one crying, children, children, as a pet carrier lies next to it holding vigil. 
the emotionless face of a man, straight lips and coal eyed, nonchalantly lying to the world. A young man defiantly standing resolute with his country, the role he was destined to play performed on the world stage as the audience holds its breath. The angelic voice of a young girl singing a song I easily recognize in a language I don't understand, but resonates non nonetheless. The file drawer is bulging, no longer orderly, stacked with feelings so strong, they are bubbling over. Room for one more before I close the drawer and seek the solace of sleep. A picture of a sunflower drawn with love. I close the drawer in this file cabinet in my heart and label it Ukraine. Wow, thank you, Carol. That was really powerful. So the title of my message today is Living from Your Heart. And you know, it's interesting to me, it still interests me after all these years, how I come up with ideas for messages. And this particular one, a friend posted something on Facebook that really touched me. And um, that's the genesis of this message. So I wanna share it with you. It's titled, Note to Self. What is my purpose in life, I asked. What if I told you that you fulfilled it when you took an extra hour to talk to that kid about his life, said the voice, or when you paid for that young couple in the restaurant, or when you saved that dog in traffic, or when you tied your father's shoes for him. Your problem is that you equate your purpose with goal-based achievement. The universe isn't interested in your achievements, just your heart. When you choose an act out of kindness, compassion, and love, you're already aligned with your true purpose. No need to look any further. So let me give you two examples, I think, that, that show what, uh, something about that, that reading. And the first one is uh, both of these, by the way, I got from reading something by Alan Cohen. And, and the first one comes from the Bible when two robbers were gonna be crucified with Jesus. And one of them turns to him and says, so if you're the son of God, get us off these crosses. And the second robber turns to the first one and says, you know, we deserve to be here, but this man, he doesn't. And Jesus turns to him and says, truly I say, today you will be with me in paradise. What it's about is the first man turned from being only concerned about himself to feel the pain of somebody else. And because he was kind in the midst of somebody else suffering, he was promised the kingdom. And, and the sec second example is one from a movie that I'm guessing everybody that's listening to this now or will listen to it has seen. It's a Wonderful Life. I know my wife likes to watch that every year. You know, and in the movie, James Stewart's character, George Bailey, he, his life seemed to have fallen apart and he was ready to end it. He was ready to commit suicide when an angel named Clarence shows up. And Clarence is able to show George, pictures of what the kindness, the caring, and the compassion he showed in his life meant. Because without him, 
the town where he lived and the people in it would have suffered a really different fate. And so when George was able to see how he touched people in his life, it changed his thoughts and, and the movie ends happily. You know, a reporter once asked Mother Teresa, what's the purpose of life? And she responded, to give and receive love. You know, when we open, when we open our hearts, the illusion that we're separate disappears. So the, the teacher, Lama Surya Das, in one of his books writes about, he said, um, it's kind of a fable about people who have died and gone to heaven. And they're all waiting in line for their judgment. And they start to talk to one another and they're saying, I wonder if he's gonna ask, was I a good parent? Or did I accomplish something of value? Or did I go to religious services every week? Or was I generous? And then when it becomes each person's turn, they're only asked one question, how well did you love? You know, we're, we're a culture that values doing. And many of us are much more concerned with quantity rather than quality. We, we judge ourselves by what we've accomplished. So um, I've mentioned to a lot of you might know that in May, Becky and I are gonna go to New York City on vacation. I grew up in New York, Beck's never been there. And so in, in, uh, in doing the, the planning, I got in touch because we're Facebook friends with somebody I went to college with that I probably haven't spoken to in at least 30 years, at least. And I thought, well, I'm going to give him a call and he'll give us ideas on um, different restaurants to go to, et cetera. And he did. He was really helpful. And when I saw what he had done in his life, he was incredibly successful had a really, really high level, wonderful career. And I thought to myself, wow, he, on some level, he's been a lot more successful in his life than I have in mine. And so now we, we get on the phone and we're chatting, like I said, for the first time in at least 30 years. And one of the first things he said to me was, you know, I see you on Facebook and I see what you've done. And I really admire what you've done with your life. Really stopped me, really made me take, take pause. You know, see, seeking fame and money and things doesn't ensure our happiness. What, what will ensure our happiness, Helen Keller told us, is fidelity to a worthy purpose. David Spangler wrote, wrote a book titled The Call. And in the book, he says, the primal call is to love and accept love. And isn't that just in different words, what Mother Teresa said the purpose of life is to love and accept love. He, he said, when we do that, it calls us out of ourself. And he goes on and he says, you know, I am my brother's keeper because we're part of a wholeness and your well-being is my well-being. Matt Kahn wrote a book that says, whatever arises, love that. And I want to read something to you from the book. He says, he says, on behalf of the universe, I welcome you to a space you never left, to reveal, to reveal, to reveal an internal kingdom that has always existed within you. And then he writes, what our life is like because that eternal kingdom always exists within us. 
And that's what I want to share with you. In every breath you take, love is always here. Throughout any personal encounter, love is always here. No matter what comes together or whatever is pulled apart, love is always here. In your greatest moment of your achievement, or even in your darkest hour of uncertainty, love is always here. Whether in the aftermath of tragedy or in the presence of your highest triumph, love is always here. When life is flowing, inspiring and harmonious, and even if it's frustrating, annoying, painful or inconvenient, love is always here. When you feel alone or unsupported, love is always here. No matter what you understand and despite what you have yet to figure out, love is always here. Despite your thoughts, regardless of what you choose or how you feel, love is always here. No matter what has been done to you or whatever you believe you've done to others, love is always here. So I want to share a story I read this week that, that speaks to our wholeness and our oneness with, with one another. So it's a story about um, a choir of Tibetan monks that's going to San Quentin prison to chant. And the San Quentin choir, after the monks chant, the San Quentin choir would sing in response. Now, the person writing the story said, all of the members of the San Quentin choir were African-Americans. Most of them had been in jail for years and years, and they lifted weights. So they were really big and buff and strong. And they had found Christ in prison. And, and the organizers were concerned that the men would see the Tibetans as heathens. And, and they, they showed up and it got even worse because when the Tibetans showed up, they showed up wearing maroon skirts. And the organizers of this event wondered What's going to happen? How are we going to get these people together? And here's how they found the solution. The gentleman giving the introduction, he said, these men, speaking about the Tibetans, these men spent years in harsh prisons. The Chinese army not only put them in prison, but they tortured them. And some of them, when they were either freed or escaped, in order to get to freedom, they had to climb the Himalayas, which is the largest mountain peak in the world. And some of them had to tie rags on their feet because they had no shoes. And now they live here and they don't know if they'll ever be able to go back to their country. And they don't know if they're ever going to be able to see their families again. And in an instant, they found understanding in their shared struggles because the men in prison understood that. There were no more thoughts of separations because feelings are what connect us. Ernest Holmes said that love is the great lodestone of life. If we have faith, confidence, and love, we shall be led to a pathway that intellect does not know. So I, I read something this week by a fellow named Chris Cade, and I thought he made a really great point in his article. One of the things he said was, you can't give what you don't have. If you don't have a dollar, obviously, you can't give one. And he said, 
It's the same thing with love. If you don't feel it for yourself, it's almost impossible to step into the world as expressions of love. You know, small acts of kindness can have great effects. So I want to I want to tell you two stories about small acts of kindness. So one of them involves me, and I don't really speak about this a lot. I I have very infrequently, but Becky and I were back in in Seal Beach where. We had gone to church and I was the assistant minister. And we went back for a visit. We went out to dinner. And that night, it was early evening. The sun was still out. We decided to take a walk on the boardwalk. And there was an absolutely gorgeous sunset. And it was really, really windy. And I had on a leather jacket that Becky had given me. And to this day, I think it's the nicest leather jacket I've ever seen. It was, I, I just really, really liked and enjoyed wearing that jacket. And as Becky and I were walking on the boardwalk, there was a homeless person sitting all hunched up looking away from the sunset because of the wind. And as we walked by him, I heard a voice in my head, clear as anything I've ever heard, that said, give him the jacket. And I actually answered the voice and said, no. And we walked to the end of the boardwalk, came back. And when we passed him again, the voice said, give him the jacket. And again, silently, I said, no. When we got to the end, I asked Becky, I said, this, is, this sunset is so gorgeous. Can we do it again? We walked again, and again, I heard the voice. And again, I said, no. When we came back the next time, I stopped when I got to him. And I said to him, it's a gorgeous sunset. Why are you facing away? And he said, the wind, it's so cold. And he had a tattered blanket around him. And I said to him, you want my jacket? And he said, do you mean it? And I said, yeah. And I went and I put my jacket around him. And we walked, as we walked away, Becky had a look that I couldn't decipher. And I thought she might be angry that I gave away a gift she had given me. And I asked her if she was angry. And she said, you know, I'm not really angry. It's just, you don't make a lot in this little church. And this is when we were in Auburn. And she said, I don't know if we could afford to get you another jacket this winter. And the point for me, eventually we did, by the way, but the point was how some small acts of kindness can mean so much to somebody else. You know, the Dalai Lama once said, there is no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophies. My brain and my heart are my temples. My philosophy is kindness. Just wanna give you one more example of the difference kindness can make. Robert Fulgham is a wonderful writer. And in one of his books, he talks about he, he passes homeless people on his walk and they had all different kinds of signs. And, and he wondered, what, what must it be like to sit there and, and wait for people's kindness? And he said, I wondered, he said, and I knew, he said that he, I didn't have the courage to do it. So he decided one day to just stand by one of the homeless people for an hour. And this is what he said. The fellow had a sign that said, homeless Vietnam vet. 
in the hour, he said, Fulgham wrote, people would stare at him and then look away. Some in cars changed lanes. One guy opened his window and leaned out and said, get a job, jackass. Someone else flipped him off. And some teens swerved their car at him. And Fulgham said at the end of the hour, he had gotten one smile and one dollar. Fulgham gave him $20 and a, and a ride to a shelter. And then he wrote, he said, you know, it's not my job or anybody's job to judge the people out there. I know I can't fix them permanently, but sometimes a small kindness is enough. I want to close with these words from Maya Angelou, who wrote, my wish for you is that you continue, continue to be who and how you are, to astonish us a mean world with your acts of kindness. God bless you. Thank you for watching and have a great week.